Matthew 25 verse 1 Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Now, let's understand this, these virgins here. Give me that one in Corinthians about the virgins. Where is it at? 11 2. 2 Corinthians 11 and 2. Let's understand what he means by virgins. Because sometimes the unlearned brother or sister will read that and go, I can't be in this truth. I'm not a virgin. They ain't talking about that. It's talking about in your spirit, spiritually. Second Corinthians 11, verse 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband. I have espoused you to one husband. That I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So when we come in this truth, when we come in this truth, it says we are espoused unto one husband, okay, which is Christ. That I might present you as a chaste virgin virgin to Christ that's he's in the masculine Israel is in the what the feminine the feminine, the feminine. we are the chaste virgin why are we a virgin because we're not corrupted with the philosophies of the world we saw our faults our sins we confessed it and forsook them so we are that chaste virgin okay give me that scripture in uh, Corinthians 5 and 7 about um all things are past all things are passed Second away. Five seventeen. Thank you. Five seventeen. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Second Corinthians five verse seventeen. <clears throat> Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. This is why you're that virgin. If you're in Christ, you are a new creature. That's why Paul used another term. Instead of new creature, he said virgin. Go ahead. Old things are passed away. All the evils you did in your life before coming into the truth is passed away. Right? Behold, all things are become new. All things are become new. You are a new creature. You are the chaste virgin. Being espoused to one husband, which is Christ the Lord. Okay? Let's go back now to Matthew 25 and 1 again. Matthew 25 verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Ten virgins. Which took their lamps. Which took their lamps. Let's get that. Proverbs 6, 23. Proverbs 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp. What? For the commandment is a lamp. What? For the commandment is a lamp. And the law is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Very good. Now back to Matthew 25. Verse 20, um, Matthew 25, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Ten virgins? Why are they virgins? Yahshua. Why are they virgins? Because you're a new creature when you come into Christ. You're a new creature when you come into Christ. You've repented of your sins. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Go ahead. Which took their lamps. What is the lamp, Hananiah? The lamp. Huh? The law. Right. Proverbs 6, 23. The, the law is a lamp. The commandment is a lamp. Go ahead. And went forth to meet the bridegroom. Who is the bridegroom? The bridegroom. Ezekiel. Jeremiah 6 and 2. Who is the bridegroom? Isaac. Bridegroom. The bridegroom is Christ. The br bridegroom is Christ. We just read. The, remember the term is groom. Masculine. Remember when 2 Corinthians 11 and 2, I've espoused you to one husband, which is Christ. Okay? From there, read on. And five of them were wise. Five of them were wise. And five were foolish. So now, you these ten virgins represent Israel that know they Israel. But Christ says five were wise and five were foolish. Let's see what makes us wise. Give me Psalms 19 and 7. Let's see, because when you look at all Israel, all of them are going to say, we all the wise. Okay, let's see. Psalms 19 verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So the law of the Lord is perfect, converting, meaning changing the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. The testimony of the Lord 
is sure. Making wise the simple. Making wise the simple. So the law and the testimony is what makes the simple wise. The law and the testimony. Everybody got that? Hmm. So now we, everybody will say that's that. But remember there was five what? Five are wise, five are fools. Let's see what makes us foolish. Get me Proverbs 10, 18. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Read it again. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. So you see what makes you a fool? That spirit of hatred, okay? And that slander, it all goes together. You hate your neighbor. You don't love your brother like you love yourself. You despise your brother. You slander your brother. Mm -hmm. Every other word. Now let me tell you something. I got to tell you something. If you're teaching and all you can do is speak evil of another brother, you are that foolish virgin. Everybody understand that? Mm. Okay, let's see. Let's go back to Matthew 25. Hey, and can I add something? Oh, no. Yeah. What's sad is you're supposed to be the teacher. Uh oh. And the public is picking up on it. They saying, I come to this guy to learn the scriptures, but every time they talk, they're mentioning so and so. Because we've seen that. Y'all stop you, you bear witness to it the other day. Absolutely. Okay? There's people asking, yo, why every time this guy teach, he mentions so and so. Now, there's something that's obviously attracting to them to the teacher, but through that teaching, they can't leave the other brother's name out their mouth. So what they look like to them? A fool! Yeah. So nobody pays attention anymore. Exactly. Okay? And people see you for what you are. Exactly. Some of these Israelites need to take a five-year hiatus. <laughs> Come back after five years and start all over again. Just redo your, because your image right now is garbage. You got doodle all on you. Don't move. You don't even realize it. Some of y'all do realize it. Hey, and, and the traffic that we get <laughs> is people saying, listen, people are calling your name so much, I want to go see what you're about. Right. You understand? After a while, they're going to say, you keep mentioning this guy, his name keeps coming up. So I got to go to his website and see what he's about. Exactly. And then they're, they're happy because they came. Exactly. I like all that publicity. There's <laughs> no such publicity as bad publicity. Exactly. No such thing as bad publicity. Okay. Back to Matthew 25. And we are in what verse? Verse 3 now. 32 again. Okay. Matthew 25 verse 2. And five of them were wise. So what makes us wise, brothers? The law and the testimony. Read it again. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Come on. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. So they took lamps and took no oil with them. Watch this. Give me Zechariah 4, 4 and 12. I just want to show you something. Mm. About Joshua and Zerubbabel. When you read the history about Joshua and Zerubbabel, Joshua, what was his title? He was what? High priest. He was a high priest. Zerubbabel was what? The governor. The governor. Very good. Their job was to rebuild the temple. They laid the foundation. They got Israel together. They organized Israel. Watch this. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 12. Let's start there. Zechariah 4 verse 12. And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches, which through the two golden pipes... Let's start at verse 9. Let's jump up. Okay. Verse 9. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. Let you know Zerubbabel going to be back. Go ahead. For who hath despised the day of small things? Mm -hmm. For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord. 
which run to and fro through the whole earth. So there were spirits, angels around Zerubbabel, okay, that pushed him to do the work of the Most High, okay, that inspired him, go ahead. Then answered I and said unto him, what are these two olive trees upon? The, the two olive trees was referring to Joshua and Zerubbabel. When you start up at verse 1 and read down, actually from chapter 3, verse 8, it mentions, Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest. Then it goes from Joshua into Zerubbabel. Verse 12 again. And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? The golden oil that came out of them was the word of the Lord that inspired Israel to do the work of God. To lay the foundation of the temple. Okay, to return to the land and start again. Now, from there, let's go back. Let's go to Proverbs 4 and 7. That's what I want. I'm still dealing with the oil. So the oil that came out of them was wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Proverbs 4 verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Read that again. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. I'm going to give you an example. Wisdom is the principal thing. With all thy getting, get understanding. Now, when you read Genesis 38, after we read it earlier in today's lesson, when the Most High killed Judah's two sons, who remembers what Judah did when he left his tent and he saw a woman on the side of the road? Remind. What did he think she was? He thought she was a harlot. Speed up! Corinthians, I believe it was the second or first Corinthians 6. That tells us, get me, get, get, get it for me, get it for me. Y'all know what I want about harlots. Remember, my point is, wisdom is the principal thing. But with all you're getting, get understanding. You got it? First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. So based on that, can we deal with harlots? No. No. If you have under, wisdom is the principal thing. You can read about the history of our forefathers. But understanding God's laws teach us, although the forefather Judah thought Tamar was a harlot and went to lay with her, understanding teaches us we can't do that. That's against what? The law, to do that. Everybody understand that? You have, you'll be surprised at the evil and ignorance of some Israelites, those are foolish brothers. You could get a prostitute. You can get it's no no nothing wrong with that. Samson did it. Samson did it. Judah did it. We could do it. Are you kidding me? There's a lot of things when you read the history that our forefathers did that was against the Most High's laws. Now, whether the Most High was merciful on them, that's between them and the Lord. David committed adultery. We can do it too. Are you kidding me? You're not David, brother. Brother, you are not King David. And David still got judged. What did the Lord do? Uh, allowed his uh, son to rape his uh, daughter. What else happened? He killed his firstborn. He killed his firstborn son. Okay. So you go and get a judgment. So although I see David, we see David did certain things, we should know. I ain't going to do that the most. I was angry with David for that. Okay? From there. Proverbs 4 and 7 again. Proverbs 4 and 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Right. Wisdom is the principal thing. You read from Genesis to Revelation. Read the whole Bible, including the Apocrypha. Right? Therefore, get wisdom. Get wisdom. Read everything. Read all this, all these records. Read it. And with all thy getting, get understanding. And with all your getting, all your study and reading, get the understanding. Should I do this although my forefather did it? No! A lot of times. It was going off. Okay, from there. Get me Sirach 19. Ecclesiasticus 19 verse 24. Watch this. I want y'all to pay 
If y'all don't understand nothing about today's lesson, remember this. He that has small understanding and feareth God is better than one that has much wisdom and transgresseth the law of the Most High. Read that again. I want this to marinate. Chew the cut on this. He that has small understanding and feareth God. So, I might have small, you might think I'm an idiot. <laughs> Maybe I am. I got a very small understanding. All I know is the commandments. We begin. He that has small understanding and feareth God is better than one that has much wisdom. I know everything. I know all the books of the Bible. I know Greek. I know Latin. Persona non grata. I speak all kind of languages. <laughs> Read that again. I know Daniel 11. I know the history of Bernice in there. Dark I know all that. Dark ages. I know the Dark Ages. I know King Althustin. I can break it all down for you. Read it again. He that has small understanding and feareth God. He's that brother that deals with milk. He knows the basics. He knows about Christ and he fears the Lord and keeps the commands. That's the small understanding he or she got. Come on. And feareth God is better than one that has much wisdom and transgresses the law of the Most High. I hate yo my brothers. I can't stand them. Always tough on your families. I hate Israelites. But I love the white woman. Amen. Are you kidding me? Any brother that follows a man of that nature, you're, you're asking to die. You're saying to the Lord, just kill me. Put me out of my misery. That's what you're saying. You, we're not going to be in camp and a brother says, oh, I hate you. Oh, I hate my people. We're going to shut the brother down. You got to sit down, brother. We ain't teaching that. That's not biblical. But then you get other brothers up. Yeah, go ahead and say whatever you want. We're going to F the white woman. We're going to F you hard. We're going to F her real hard. Are you kidding me? Nobody sees nothing wrong with this. With all your wisdom. Read that verse again, please. Now, I'm, 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 I'm quoting what we've heard. Because brothers send us these stupid little tapes out there. Read it again. He that has small understanding and feareth God is better than is what is better is what better is better than one that had much wisdom and transgressed the law of the Most High. I hope all you brothers understand. If you don't understand nothing in today's lesson, understand what that verse is talking about. I got something for that. This is Tobit 12 and verse 8. Let same, me get it. Let me get it. Same thing. Tobit 12 and what verse? 8. Go ahead. Uh, prayer is good with fasting and alms and righteousness. A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. It is better to give alms than to lay up gold. Meaning it's better to have a little right. It's better to have little with righteousness than much with unrighteousness. Meaning much wisdom. Going with, going with Sirach, 1924, saying the same thing. Exactly. Let's go back to uh, Matthew 25. Let's go right back to Matthew 25. Now, we got to have that spirit to love all Israel. No matter what Israel does or say, we must have the spirit of Christ. Well, let me say it this way. We must have the spirit of Yahweh Shai on us <laughs> to forgive. Yep. Be not ignorant of Satan's devices. Okay? Everybody understand that? Yes. All right. Matthew 25 and what verse? We're in verse 3 now. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. So they took the commandments, that's the lamps, but they took no oil, no understanding. Come on. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. While the bride, who's the bridegroom? Ezekiel? Uh, Christ. Christ. What does it mean he tarried? Uh, tarried means to wait. What, what does it mean he waited? Waited for what? Azariah. He tarried. He, he waited for us to get to understand. And for him to do what? Hmm? 
They all slumbered and slept. You want to go to the part where it says they all slumbered and slept? Nope. Tarry. Leon, Tarry. Oh, when he waited for his return. Right, his return. That's what Tarry. His return, the bridegroom's return. Read that again. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Now we get to the slumbered and slept. Who can help me? Slumbered and slept. These ten virgins, which represents the Israelites in the understanding, in the knowledge, they all slumbered and slept. You're either part of the five wise or part of the five foolish. Isaac. The slumbered and slept are uh, talking about those Israelites who are not keeping the commandments. No. Have a seat. I'm up. Isaac. Going into slavery. Right. They went into captivity. I'm going to show you that. Give me that in um, Deuteronomy 32 26. Write this down. When you slumber and sleep, are you conscious? No. No, you're not. Remind me. I didn't write it down. Remind me to get that one in Isaiah. About our sons. Isaiah 51, 52, somewhere around there. Yeah, I got it. I know what you want. Alright, Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32, verse 26. Verse 26. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. So God scattered us and he said he would make the remembrance of them to what? To cease from among men. To cease from among men. Now give me Jeremiah 17 and 4. Here's another precept to help us understand what does it mean they all slumbered and slept. Slumbered and slept to the truth of who they are, what is required of them. Jeremiah 17 verse 4. And thou even thyself shalt discontinue from thine heresy. See that? And thou even thyself. Who's the thou? Even thyself, I'm all. Uh, the thou is Israel, thyself was God talking about Jeremiah. Jeremiah. And even you, Jeremiah. Read it again. And thou, even thyself. Because Jeremiah is going to come back in the regeneration. Read it again. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage. So when Jeremiah comes back in these last days, might be one of y'all up in here. You at one time discontinued from the heritage God gave you. You were raised up as Sambo Coon. <laughs> now you're trying to wake up out of that. Go ahead. That I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. Now give me Psalms 83 and 4. You got what I want to write. Psalms 83 verse 4. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So we were cut off in slavery. The understanding of who we are, what we are, was destroyed in slavery. Now, what you got, Yasa? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 51, and verse 20. I want all y'all to get it. It goes with slumbered and slept. That's why I asked you. When you slumber and sleep, are you conscious? The answer is no. Here's the proof. Isaiah 51 and verse 20. Thy sons have fainted. See that? Thy sons have fainted. Meaning thy sons have lost consciousness. Thy sons have slumbered and slept. To the truth of who they are. They lie at the head of all the streets. They hang on all the corners in the cities. As a wild bull in a net. They are uncontrollable. Our sons are like wild bulls in a net. The net are the traps in Babylon the Great. The political traps, the religious traps, the poverty traps, nets. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of, the rebuke of thy God. The judgments of God. All right, so now let's go back to Matthew 25 and 5 again. Matthew 25 verse 5. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. You don't, and at midnight there was a cry made, Behold the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Who made this cry? Who made this cry? Because if they were asleep, who made the cry? Zakai. John the Baptist. 
John the Baptist also called Elijah. Elijah. Let's get that. Malachi. Malachi chapter 4. The book of Malachi chapter 4. Verse 5. Verse 5. Start at 4. Verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses my servant which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Come on. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So the great and dreadful day of the Lord is the destruction. The prophecy is he would send Elijah the prophet. To do what? Verse 6. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. Who? What is the heart of the fathers? What is the heart of the fathers? Leon. Uh, the, heart of, the heart of the fathers is the Bible. The Bible. Who's the children? The children is us. Why would Elijah have to return? Why would he have to turn the heart of the fathers to the children? Why? He, he slumbered and slept. Because, right, we forgot who we are. Elijah would be the brother who would come back and say, Wake up! You're like, the Israelites, the Bible speaks of. He would be that dude. And this is the evidence that he has come and gone. Read it again. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. See that? So that's the prophecy. That is the prophecy. So now, from there, let's go back to Matthew 25. Matthew 25. And there was only one brother named Bivens who came and taught the blacks and the Native Americans and Latinos and Israelites. All the men before him only counted so-called Negroes. None of them counted Latinos or Native American Indians. So it amazes me when I see one of our Latin brothers say, Bivens was the devil. Shut up, brother. You the damn devil of Bible speaks up. Because if that brother didn't uh, teach that you were Israelite, you wouldn't know who the hell you was. Yeah, you'd still be butt naked playing basketball in the rain. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so it just me I hear the level of stupidity out there. <laughs> Y'all so always come up with these little sayings like what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Back in uh, Matthew 25. Verse 7. Verse 6 again. <laughs> Verse 6. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Behold, Christ cometh. Go ye out to meet him. So that was the spirit of Elijah. Okay, who came and taught Israel. Wake up. You are not blacks and Latinos. You are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Keep the commandments. Read. Then all those virgins arose. Then all those virgins arose. And trimmed their lamps. They prepared themselves. They got themselves ready. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Read that again. <laughs> and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil. Give us your understanding. For our lamps are gone out. Our understanding is gone. Here's a clue, brothers. Here's a clue if you ever want to know if a brother's oil is gone. His oil is gone if all he can talk about is you. If you are the topic of conversation, his oil is gone. Every clip, every video, every street teaching, there's a brother who he hates. Who he will dis his oil is gone. Okay? Y'all understand that? If he starts teaching the spirit of hatred and death upon fellow Israelites, his oil is gone. His oil is gone. And the brothers with them, their oil is gone. It don't matter if they've been in the truth 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. Brother, your oil is gone. It don't matter how long you've been in this truth. Because listening with all the evil, the death that's coming out of your mouth, the hatred, the, the raping of children, are you kidding me? The brother's oil is gone, long 
gone. I'm going to give you some proof that the oil is gone. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 14. I'll read it for you. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So what are we supposed to be preaching? The gospel of the kingdom. That should be, that's what should be coming out of your mouth. Not death and hatred against your brothers. That ain't the gospel at all. That's the devil that the Bible speaks of. That's what's coming out. Exactly. Now, an idiot will run to David. David said, do not I hate them with a perfect hatred? Right, right. Who is the king and the savior? Is it David? Christ. It's Christ. Did Christ teach us to do that? You had two brothers, James and John, correct me if I'm wrong. They went to a city to preach. Give me that. Find me that. Find me that. So y'all can read it. Who, the sons of Boag Boagernes. Boagernes. Sure sure Find me that. We got to read it for ourselves. In case some of you, you like that spirit of hatred. I hate you. Yeah, okay. Luke 9 verse what? Verse 54. Verse 54. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them. He what? He turned and rebuked them. Christ rebuked that spirit. Go ahead. And said, ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man is come not to destroy me. Is not lives. come. For the oh, Son God. of Man is not, not come. I'm sorry, I can't read it again. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. But to what? To save them. So y'all see that? So if you're in a camp and a brother is wishing death and destruction on his people, he's not following Christ. His oil is gone. His oil is gone. Um, and love the other nation. Right. All done. Yeah. Can we seal it up with another scripture? Yes. First John 3, verse 15. Mm. This should make it crystal clear for the lost ones. This is the book of St. John. First the John. First, first book of John in the back of the Bible. Chapter 3 and verse 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Okay, because that's why in conjunction with the, with the hatred they have, they wish death upon you. Because what follows behind the hate, it reaches to the point where you want to see bodily harm come to the person you hate. So read it again. Whosoever hateth his brother, brother is a murderer. Because if given the chance, if you can get away with it, you will kill that person you hate. Read on. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding so in him. So that person with hatred, he's not going to get the kingdom. There's no eternal life. He's not thinking about the kingdom, eternal life. He's so focused on his hatred, he cannot stop talking about killing his brothers. Killing his fellow Israelites, who he's supposed to be trying to instill the keys to the kingdom. So there is no eternal life. If there's no oil, his oil is gone. He's finished. That's why all that comes out of his mouth is hatred and wishing death upon people. Sending up prayers to the Most High to kill another Israelite, you are a murderer and you will not see the kingdom. Right. Who knows what that law is? In Deuteronomy, I think it is. About um, judgment. Deuteronomy 17. Deuteronomy 17. About judgment, inquisition, and so forth. It's in Deuteronomy 17 and uh. Hey, let me see it some. Great. Yeah, gotcha. Well, I'll find it. Now, let me see some for the Christians and them out there that that um just read that scripture that we read in no. Luke 19. In Luke in Luke 9, all right. When the scripture said that Christ didn't come to to destroy men's lives, but to save but to save men's lives, right? The men there is only talking about the Israelites, the Israelite men. is not talking about the heathens, mm -hmm. all right. Just want to put that out there for the Christians that might be that that's out there, all right? Okay, go to Deuteronomy 19. Let's give you some more milk. We're gonna give you some milk. Deuteronomy 19, verse 16. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which was wrong, that which is wrong, then both the men between whom the controversy is 
shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition. And behold, if the witness be a false witness, and have testified falsely against his brother, then shall you do unto him as he hath had thought to have done unto his brother. Mm. So shalt thou put away, put the evil away from among you. Read 19 again. For all you brothers who wish death and destruction on your fellow Israelite, read that again. Then shall you do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother. So shalt thou put away, put evil, put the evil away from among you. So be mindful of that milk. Once you learn that you'll know to control your tongue, watch your mouth. And don't bring forth for false accusations. The idle word. That cannot be proven or substantiated. And you want to bring death on people. And you got every little dumb Negro imp with a ripped up garment following behind you. <laughs> you kidding me? Proverbs 19 and 5. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaks lies shall not escape. See that? Read it again loud. Proverbs 19 and 5. A false witness shall not be unpunished. A false witness shall not be unpunished. And he that speaketh lies shall And he not that speaketh lies shall not escape. Proverbs 19 and what was that? 5. Proverbs 19 and 5. Good. Let's go back to Matthew 25. Matthew 25, 25 verse 8. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil. For well, our lamps are gone out. Our lamp is gone out. Our understanding is gone. We stand on the street and speak hatred from sunup to sundown. Dumb all over again. Right. Right. But you notice something, what we read in this, that the foolish, they realized that they were dry. Mm -hmm. when, you get beyond the, when you get beyond realizing that you're gone, you're a reprobate. Right. You don't even know that you're in sin. You right. don't even know that what you're doing is putting a price on your own head with the dumb, simple, stupid speeches that you're putting out. Exactly. Most are going to kill you for that. And that's why you can forget about what we're saying. That's what the Bible says. Exactly. You got to fear the power behind this book. Exactly. Now, we're not saying that there's no hope for nobody. Because we, that's why I brought it earlier at the beginning about grace and mercy. The Most High, if it be His will, can allow certain brothers to recover themselves. But that's His will, not mine. Exactly. You know, not man's. We hope they do recover. Right. Before can I, the Most High brings can I add something on? We hope they do recover before the Most High brings their judgment. Exactly. It's easy to hate. That comes natural to us. The hard thing to do is pick up this, this Bible and change your ways and stop making that hatred occupy your mind and your heart. It's easy to do that. Okay, a real man that's handling this Bible right, right? What does it teach you to do? Love your wives first. Okay? Love your brethren. Love Christ. Love the most high. Okay? Because our people don't know that. It needs to be taught to them. But it's easy. That's why you'll see, like the elder pointed out, the brother will go out on the street and start speaking to hate. And people don't even know who he's talking about. They join right in. They don't know nothing. They just join right in with the hate. Because it's easy. To get to the level where you brothers are, it took time. You have to come in, learn how to love your family, love, learn how to love, love your brethren, learn how to love the Most High, learn how to love Christ, and now you have to teach it to everybody else. Right. And you're standing out there as a teacher, wishing death on people. You're finished. Can I get two things real quick? Just to go along with your point. Yeah, one real quick. Y'all saw a Showtime at the Apollo. Anybody familiar with that? I'm going to show you how, like Deacon Asaph said, it's easy to hate. When many of us used to go, what did we go there for? <laughs> to boom. Yeah. We wanted to humiliate somebody. That's what's in us naturally. Yeah. Now you're coming in this truth, right. you got to change your ways. You, you can't be like that. Go ahead, y'all. Sorry. Right. Give me the book of Isaiah 9 and 16. Get that. Because it's a point to be made is that when you're when you're ahead of the when you're in front of the people teaching the people your responsibility, you're you're the watchman for their souls, and your job is not to not to misguide them and, man and manipulate them for your own private gain. Right. There's a terrible penalty for that. The Lord said that He will destroy the preachers and the teachers that feed themselves off the people and not feed them. Read. Oh. Isaiah, yeah. Isaiah 9 verse 16. 
For the leaders of this people cause them to err. Because the leaders are sick. The whole head is, when it's talking about the leaders being the head of the people. The head of the people is sick. Read it again. For the leaders of this people cause them to err. Come on. And they that are led of them and, are. And they that are led of them, referring to the, what we were talking about earlier, the people that's in these camps that are well, along with these brothers that's following these bad examples. Come on. Are destroyed. Are destroyed. Give me one more. Isaiah 5 and 13. Isaiah 5 and 13. This is where our people are. And it's the leader's fault. Because they have become reprobate. But we pray that they get themselves together and stop this foolishness before the Most High drop the boom. Isaiah 5.13 Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Because they have no knowledge. These preachers, these brothers that's teaching these camps and so forth, their job is to instruct the people correctly. To instruct them wisely. And they're not giving them the knowledge of the Most High to repent. The knowledge of the Most High is the commandments. You're supposed to be teaching the people the commandments. They're teaching the people to come out of their sinful lifestyles. Show them the ways of Christ. That's what our job is. Our job is not to get off on how we feel against somebody else. That's not, that's not the purpose of why you're in this Bible. Read. And their honorable men are famished. And their honorable men are starved. Meaning that they don't have the knowledge in their head to teach the people properly. And they get up there for their own game. That's the honorable men, the men that are held up in high esteem among these people that are following them. Come on. And their multitude dried up with thirst. And the people that are following them are just as empty as the teacher that's teaching them. And there's a penalty for that. And the Most High said, therefore, hell has enlarged itself. The Most High is going to bring total damnation on the teacher as well as the people that's following them. Exactly. Let's go back to Matthew 25. And what verse we were at? Nine. Matthew 25, verse 8 again. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Our understanding is gone. It's gone. But the wise... Let me ask you all a question. The under... I'm going to see who's thinking. The understanding or the, the doctrine of the RFID chip where did it originate? Who started teaching that? Huh? Um, William Cooper. William Cooper? Adam. He taught you can read that in uh, what's the name of that book? Behold a pale horse. You have many Christian Edomite leaders like Jack Van Impey. Look, just Google them, you'll find that doctrine. Don't think that that's an Israelite doctrine. It's a Christian doctrine. A doctrine from Christianity. White militia groups too. Right. White militia groups teach that. Okay. So now, where you at? Verse 9 now. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Who remembers Isaiah 55 and 1, what it said? Mm -hmm. uh, come, without, yeah? uh, come by without price. Come by. Come to who? Come to the Most High Christ. Right. Come to the Most High Christ. Meaning, so what are, they, what are the wives telling these foolish to do? Hi, Mark. Uh, go to the teachers. Nope. You already forgot. Joel. Go back to understand the scriptures. To find the laws. And? And Ramiah. Study. Something else. Yeah, you know, those answers are good. Something else they got to do. Um, study, apply, and teach. Study, apply, and teach. I want a word. Bezalel? I want a word. Ezekiel? Repent. Repent. Go to them that buy and sell. Go back to the Most High in Christ and repent. That's what he's saying. Read it again. Go ahead, y'all. So you going to say something? Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, the same thing as what Christ said. He said, if you're going to come to me, you have to come to him as a child. That's right. That's what it means. You can't come with your own mind. You have to come, be, you have to forget all that garbage that you've learned and open your mind up to Christ. That's talking about repentance. Exactly. Where you at? Verse 9. But the wise answered, saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. So the five wise could not help them. 
So that let you know it's beyond man's control. You have to go to the source. Mm -hmm. He's telling them you got to go to the Heavenly Father in Christ because we can't help you. Okay? But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Mm -hmm. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. When they went, Christ returned. Okay? And they that were ready went in with them to the marriage. And the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins. Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. See that? That's the point. I know you not. You workers of iniquity. That right. Say what you say. Right. That's the same quote in another part of the Matthew scriptures where, where it says, right. I know, he said, depart from me, you that work iniquity. Mm -hmm. yep. I know you not. I know you not. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Exactly. And the only way the Lord's going to know you is like we read in, where's that revelation? Um, Give me that 12 and 14. No, 14 and 12 was it? Yeah. Let's read that again. So we can see for you. I eat milk, Ock. I mean, I eat meat, Ock. You crazy. Yeah. Revelations 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. That's what the Lord is looking for. All that Latin, Greek, the Hebrew, you know, it's fine. But that's not what the Lord is looking for. I'm not saying it's a sin. Don't misunderstand me. Because it's not. But if you're neglecting the obedience to the commandments, you're in sin. You're in the midst of sin. Okay? From there. We're almost done. Acts 8 verse 29. Listen good. Then the this is for you brothers that say, I don't need no man to teach me. Ooh. This is for you. Mm. And the, spirit the Lord ain't going to come down and teach nobody. The Lord taught one man. In this day and age, what man was that that he taught? Elijah. Elijah. That was it. Any brother, because you hear him, I taught myself. You are a liar, and the devil is on you. Here you go. And the Spirit said unto Philip, we in Acts chapter 8, verse 29. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Acts 8, verse 29. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him. And heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? Do you see that? This brother understood. How can I understand the scriptures, except some man should guide me? It must be a man who has the Holy Spirit upon him. That way you're going to get the understanding. But you got these cats that sit around at home, talking about, I teach myself, Ark. Brother, no. That's why you come up with those dumb doctrines. Like the chip, the chip. And all the other foolish things like we can rape babies. Are you kidding me? That's a reprobate I teach myself. You need brothers over. That's why there was always a structure in Israel. Always. From when you read from Genesis. There was always order. That's why at the old school, there was structure. Things y'all hear today, brothers would be ashamed to utter. Because they knew the seven elves would smash their behind. You would have never heard it uttered. You know, you would have never heard a doctrine about raping babies. Never, ever that would have been uttered. <laughs> a lot of them out there that's saying that know that. They exactly. know they were to, as soon as they got out of that, then they went wild. Exactly. Exactly. From there, Isaiah 30 and 20. Isaiah 30 and 20. Oh, sorry, go to and though the Lord give you the bed of adversity and the water of affliction, Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. So the Most High promised, though he gives us the bread of adversity, that's their slavery, and the water of affliction, that's our tears and sorrow, mm -hmm. due to oppression and poverty, he said, yet will not your teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. The teachers of the Most High are going to come up, you're going to know them. Some, we're right here, and there's many others. I'm never going to say we're the only teachers. We're not the only teachers. Okay? Those brothers that teach in the spirit of Christ, the spirit of repentance, those are your teachers. Brothers in Florida, Kenai Abiel, those are your teachers. They teach in the spirit of Christ and repentance. Now, go to um, Acts. Here's the priest of Acts 26. 26. So now, 
That verse is going for these last days, first and foremost. But it also went during the days of the apostles. And here's the precept. Acts 26, 26. Acts 26, verse 26. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely. Watch this. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. See that? This thing, the preaching of the gospel, the healings was not done in a corner. That goes back to what we read in Isaiah 30. Okay, your teachers will not be removed into a corner, but your eyes will see your teachers. Okay, from there, get me Hebrews 5 and 12. It's the book of Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers... For when for the time... Now remember, in order to understand this, who is Paul writing this letter to? That's the first thing. Isaac. He's writing the letter, this letter to the schools. Pharisees. Okay. Pharisees. That believe in Christ. Okay, I'll go with that. I'm a little more. Okay. okay. Yeah. He's writing to the Hebrews. Thank you. That's what I wanted. Right. He's writing to the Hebrews. Those that knew the law. Those that knew the law and were coming into the understanding of Christ. That's what I wanted. He's writing to the Hebrews. <laughs> Read it again. Yeah. Oh. For when for the time he ought to be teachers. Because these Hebrews were learned men. Go ahead. Ye have need that one teach you again. Teach you again about what? What did they have to learn again? What did they have to learn about? Corey. Laws. Nope. These were Hebrews. They were raised in the law. Yeah. They had to learn Christ. They had to learn Christ. That's what they had to learn. That's why I said, if y'all never read the book of Acts, give me that. Is it Acts 17? About Berea and Thessalonica. Yeah. Give me that. Here's the proof. I'm going to give y'all the proof right here. That it's Christ. <laughs> Acts 17. Let's start at 1. 1 to 3. Acts 17 verse 1. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis, Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica. There was a synagogue of the Jews. Where was a synagogue? Y'all see that? Synagogue of the Jews. Yeah. These are learned men in the law. Watch this. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them. And three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. Do y'all see that? That's what he was teaching. Back to Hebrews 5. And 12 again. Mm -hmm. This, what I'm giving y'all is the proper understanding. For when for the time he ought to be teachers. So who were these teachers? That, who were those that ought to be teachers? Those Hebrews in those synagogues. Those Jews, go ahead. Ye have need that one teach you again. Teach you again about what? Christ. 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 Go ahead. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. So they had need of milk. So Paul was saying, you teachers, before y'all start teaching, you need to learn all over again. You need to learn about Christ. Okay? You got to start with the milk. You're not in need of strong, what does it say? And, and are not what? And are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Come on. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Now you might take verse 13 as an insult. Read it again, Yalsa. But Deacon Yalsa brought a scripture out earlier. He paraphrased it. Read it again. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. On, uh, in the word of righteousness for he is a babe you might think that's an insult what is he saying <coughs> Corey you have to be born again yeah, give me more give me more so I know you got the thought you on it though 
Gotta, um, you gotta be like a baby and be born again. You give me that, y'all. Stop. You quoted it up, paraphrasing. I think it's Matthew 18. Here's what he's saying. You read that and get insulted, brother. We need milk up in here. All you, you got to know the sun, the moon, and star, brothers. You X, um, what's that group that do mathematics? You X five percenters. Come on, what you got? All right, it's the book of St. Matthew, chapter 18, verses 3 to 5. And so, nope. start at 1. Okay, first verse. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You see that? We must be converted and become as little children in its truth. That's the babe. So don't feel insulted. Oh, I'm insulted. Are you kidding me? Christ said we must be like little children in this truth. 